Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session, Introduction to Calculation Groups. My name is Pedro Reis. Before we start, who has already created a calculation group before? Anyone? OK, so great, you are in the right session. So uh, about me, I'm a Microsoft uh, MVP and MCT. Uh, I'm a leader of a user group, the, the Portuguese user community of Fabric and Power BI. Uh, and I also provide the training and consulting on multiple topics related to Power BI and, uh, and Fabric. Uh, what's our session plan? First of all, I'm going to share with you guys what are the calculation groups and how you can use them in a Power BI desktop. How I'm going to do a demo, how you can create them. And we're going to add a little bit of complexity step by step on that. Then I'm going to show you the different use cases where you can apply this type of uh, calculation groups. And finally, some resources if you want to do the steps I did, train on your own and uh, try it out on your, on your Power BI's, OK? And the contacts. So the first thing, what are the calculation groups? The calculation groups is, this is the definition, a technique to modify the context of existing measures and greatly simplify the application of common repeated uh, calculations. For instance, you can see here that we, uh, if we want, we have a couple of measures. So for instance, if I have uh, total sales, cost of uh, goods sold, um, something like this, uh, total quantity margin, but for each of these measures, I don't want to create, for instance, the same measure for the previous year, the same measure for the year to date. Because imagine if you have 100 measures and you have 10 different calculations on time intelligence, it means that 100 multiplied by 10, you need to create 1,000 measures. If you can just create 100 measures and 10 calculation groups, it means you just have to define 110 DAX expressions, which is much simpler. This is the reason why we're going to try to do this. And if I show you on the Power BI desktop, your models uh, start to have something like this. You have your measures, and I just have five here, which is um, very, uh, not too many, but just to illustrate this. And if you want to define measures for the previous year, if you want to have measures for, for instance, for the year to date, you each time you need to define again and again this calculation if you don't know how to use the technique I'm going to show. And also, if you want to provide your users with the flexibility, you know, uh, okay, you give all the measures in a table or in a matrix, and if they don't want to see anything and they want to customize it, we want to give them the flexibility. Otherwise, you guys know what they are going to do. Export to Excel. That's what we want to avoid if we can. So what, uh, what do we want to do? Uh, I want to share also that uh, creating calculation groups has, uh, is already possible uh, within, with an external tool tabular editor since 2020, but now can be done directly in Power BI Desktop. So if you guys, do you guys work with Power BI Desktop? Raise your hand, please. OK, perfect. It means it's very simple to create now this in Power BI Desktop. So how can we create the calculation groups in Power BI Desktop? Uh, for now, it will appear that it's in preview in the, uh, in the options and settings, but maybe in a couple of months, it's not in preview anymore, so it will disappear from that. If it's still on preview and you activate this on the settings, you need to restart Power BI Desktop, and from that point on, it's activated. And then you have this button that you see there, Calculation Groups, and you um, work with it in the Relationships uh, view. So you can see here, in the Relationships menu, you will find uh, the item to create the calculation groups. Better than said, I'm going to show you guys how to create uh, this. OK, so let's go. To, uh, I have a simple model. This is the, um, the the adventure works, and I will provide a link in the end if you guys want to download this model. It's pu public from Microsoft, and so I have the five measures that I've just uh, shown. Here they are. I'm going straight to the relationship uh, to the uh, modeling view, and on the relationships, and we can see, uh, for instance, that on my tables here I have in my cells. A good practice before we continue is uh, I really like my measures really tidy and organized. So I can create a display folder for them, sales measures. Here I create it. And you can see now I have uh, just a folder to organize my measures. Uh, after we create my sales measures, now what I want to create is the time intelligence calculation. So as I just said, we have here on the top part a button which is calculation group. So let's create our first calculation group. I just click on it, calculation group. 
and it appears the pop-up that I had on the PowerPoint, which is implicit measures will be discouraged from in this model. Implicit measures is everything that you see here with the additive, with the, the sum sign, meaning everything that Power BI sees as a number that automatically will try to uh, aggregate for you guys. When you activate calculation groups, this no longer does by default the aggregation, so everything needs to be explicit measures, which is to define like a, a sum, an average, or something. Okay? So after we, um, we um, let me just escape this. Yes, I'm going to say yes, and we'll see that the, the sign uh, disappeared. Okay? And a lot of stuff appeared. Let's go step by step and see what we're going to do. The first thing uh, we have here in the DAX editor, a formula to create our first calculation item. Let's call it current. And current is just selected measure. This means that when you select uh, sales, when you select quantity, it will be that measure that will be your selected measure, and we'll have it, okay. Our current calculation is the selected measure. I'm going to create another one. Right click and create a new calculation item. A second one I'm going to create um, can be, for instance, my uh, year-to-date. And so the formula for the year-to-date will be my total year-to-date of my um, selected measure, and I need to select the dates. So uh, just pointing to my date column. So this is my year-to-date um, calculation group. Let me copy this, create a new one for the month-to-date, for instance. Okay. So my month to date, and this is my total month to date. Okay, just creating, I'm going just to create five, just to be very simple. Uh, the final two, uh, let's create, for instance, um, let me create just one more, which will be the previous, um, the previous year. Uh, and so the previous year, a very normal formula index, we just apply a calculate, right? Calculate, we recalculate, we change the context of our selected measure, and we can use, a, um, for instance, same period last year, or you can use a date uh, add. Uh, I'm going to update, change the context of my dates, um, and it will be minus one year. Okay? Just creating this very simple measure for the previous year. Now, uh, let's try it out. I'm going back to, the, to, the, um, to my model view, and I can see that I have here on the top my calculation group. Okay, so let me uh, try to zoom in here. Here it is, my calculation group. I can drag it, uh, for instance, and make a slicer of my calculation group. Let me actually just, I, ni I like things nice and tidy, so I'm just going to copy paste the format of this one, and I'm going to add the calculation group as uh, a column. So now I can select, okay, current month to date, etc. It's not doing anything uh, because Right now, I want to apply these calculations as columns in my matrix. So I'm going to add it in my matrix. And now we can see that for all the measures that I have in the matrix, it's doing the calculations, right? For the sales, for the quantity, it's showing me the current value. It's also showing me the month to date. It's also showing me the previous date, the previous year. Let me simplify this, uh, just keeping one of the measures, and it will be more visible. So as we can see now, here we have, for our fiscal year, the current values, so my year, my month to date, for, uh, my year to date, and also my previous year, okay? So let me go back here. And what I'm going to do next is, after creating this calculation group, you see that the name here is not very uh, friendly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this double click and rename it Time Intelligence. And actually, the name of the group uh, here, I can also rename it Time Intelligence. OK. Uh, what I is this useful for? Now I can see that in my slicer I it appears. For instance, I'm just going to select my current and my previous year. And you can see now the flexibility I can select in the slicer. Uh, and if I want uh, two measures here, now I I it's very easy for me to, to iterate on this. Let's enrich our model. I'm not going to add now a calculation group, but uh, has anyone used the field parameters? Field parameters? Okay, a couple of you guys. So the next thing I'm going to show is I want to give the users the option of selecting the not only the calculations, but which measures are being the calculation applied. So what I'm going to do is 
uh, in my modeling tab, I have here uh, an option which is new parameter. New parameter, fields. And what I can select is just from my sales uh, measures folder. Let's select, for instance, my sales, my quantity, my cost of goods sold, my margin and my margin percentage. And I'm going to call uh, this my uh, selection of measures, something like this. I can choose to add a slicer already. I'm not going to do it so that I can do it nice and tidy also formatted. And we can see here in the bottom, it appeared a table. A table was created, which is just a placeholder uh, for you guys just to select from a column which of the measures you want to, to, to have in your model. So copy paste the slicer and I'm going to change the field in my slicer to my selection of measures. And now, uh, nothing will happen if I select something here. Nothing will happen because I need to update my visual. Instead of my values being a predefined measure, now I'm going to update it with my selection of measures. Which means now, if I want to apply my calculation, for instance, to my quantity, you can see, now I have my quantity and I can update completely the calculation as I want and the, the group of measures where I apply the calculation. So very powerful, right? It's very easy to do this with, without a lot of uh, work. We did this in a couple of minutes. You can do this for your entire set of measures and not having to redo, redo DAX expressions. And on Power BI Desktop, we don't need any more external tools unless you want to be even more efficient uh, and do that by code. So the next step we're going to see, I'm going back to the PowerPoint. So we've seen that you can create these for time intelligence functions. There are also other use cases. Um, one, you can also do this for different scenarios. For instance, if you want to compare versus the previous year, it's very common, versus a budget. It's also very common, right, versus a plan. So you can also use this technique uh, either to add a new layer, uh, which is the, which are you calculating versus the previous year or versus another scenario like the budget or a, even a different version of the budget. You can redo the same calculation. Uh, other um, use case is changing uh, uh, the dates for which the calculation is done. For instance, if you ship things on one month, but it's uh, in January and it's delivered in February, it's different to calculate your sales or the quantity by the shipment date or the order date or the delivery date, right? It's very common scenario too, doing these calculations. I'm going to demonstrate also how can we do these two calculations and enrich our model. So going back to the demo, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, in my calculation groups uh, that I have here, you can see them here, calculation items. I'm going to add uh, one more new calculation item. And there are ways to do this in a more complex way. Uh, I, I will give some uh, links in the end. I'm going to do this in a very simple way, which is versus previous year. How am I going to do the calculation versus previous year? I'm going to use variables in DAX. I'm going to create a variable for the current year, which is just my selective measure. I'm going to do a variable for the previous year, which is just equal to uh, the time intelligence calculation for the previous year, which will be um, uh, calculate uh, my selective measure, uh, dates add, and my dates will be, uh, my here are my dates, um, minus one year, and I have my formula created. Okay, so I have my current year, my previous year defined, and now I want to return, actually, the current year minus the previous year, okay? So I'm going just to uh, show the differential between the delta between one year and the other one in my uh, measure. With this formula uh, created, I can also do the same thing in terms of percentage, right? The percentage uh, variation for the previous year. So instead of returning the current year uh, minus the previous year, I'm going actually to divide, divide, this by my previous year. Ah, I was already using this. Um, I need to change the name. What did I do? Let me just fix this really quick. Okay, so uh, versus previous year percentage, I gave it the same name. So divide 
current year minus previous year by the previous year. Okay. Let me just put this correctly. Okay. Yep. Now we can see that uh, I can also uh, have uh, different options. You can see I have the previous year and the previous year percentage. I'm just going to select one um, other measure, which is for one measure, just to be simple, the quantity. And you can see now I have, for instance, on 2019 July, 7,400 versus 5,000, so the delta is 2,300. What I need to do is to format. I actually need to add a dynamic format string, and here I have it, in my calculation group and state the, the, the format. For instance, I want two, decimal, um, two decimals in my format because this one has a different format than the other ones, which is a numeric ones, right? In percentage is different, so I need to update the format. And I did something wrong, but it's no problem. You can see right now, for instance, 58%. Uh, percent, uh, I just need to add the percent sign here. Okay, and here we have uh, our calculation group completely uh, defined and working and completely flexible. A third layer that we can also add is doing these calculations for the different dates. I already have that prepared, that demo, and let me show you here very quickly. A different, uh, we can also create a new calculation group, and I have here in the calculation group, I have another one which is called calculation date. The calculation date, let me show you the, um, the different calculation items. It's very simple. It's just, I'm going to do diff three different calculations. One of them is on my due date, you see. If th the calculation date that I want to use is the due date, then just use the relationship between the due date key and the date key. If I want to use the calculation based on the order date, then just use the relationship between the sales order key, right? The sales order key and the date key. And if it's the ship date, it's exactly the same thing. So three measures, exactly the same thing. When I go to my Power BI, now we also have this flexibility, which is I can completely change my calculation principle. You see, from my order date, if I want to calculate things from my shipment date, it also works. From my due date, I can have the two of them at the same time. And I just added this. Let me just click on the table. You see, I also added in columns the time intelligence uh, calculation items, the uh, calculation date calculation items, and my field parameter of the measures in my uh, values. So completely flexible report wi for self-service BI with all the possibilities for the end users. Um, to wrap things up, there are other use cases. For instance, you can do uh, rate conversion from euros to dollar. You can do rate conversions, for instance, on the rate at the average rate for the day, the closing rate for the day, the beginning date. You can do all these kind of things. You can also do forecasts, change the, the, the calculation principle too. You can do statistics. Statistics, for instance, changing if you are doing a sum, an average, a count, a percentile 95, a percentile 99. All of this is exactly the same principle to do. Uh, I want to show you, uh, here you have two links for two documentations, if you guys want to take a picture or afterwards to check it out. I'm going to show you very quickly where we have it, here. So the two links I provided, one of them is a very simple introduction to the calculation groups in the Microsoft documentation, calculation groups. And the second one is what is called a deep dive into the calculation groups where you have a lot of use cases. You can also download the sample and try by your own to follow these steps, okay? So two things, the simple one, start with the simple one, try the more complex one, and you guys will see after start using calculation uh, groups, your life will become much easier and more simple to maintain your models, okay? So going back to the presentation, I hope you guys enjoyed this session that I can make your DAX easier uh, and if you have any questions, maybe we won't, won't have time for questions, but you guys can come here and we can stay for a little bit with questions. Thank you all.